The FBI has raided the headquarters of one of the nation's largest operators of psychiatric hospitals. Hundreds complained of overbilling, misdiagnosed conditions, and insurance fraud. Investigators say they found more than 5,000 similar cases in all 50 states. Psychiatrists clearly are getting rich. Psychiatrists traded drugs for sex, filed false insurance claims, and exploited patients sexually. We have uncovered some of the most elaborate, aggressive, creative, deceptive, immoral, and illegal schemes being used to fill empty hospital beds with insured and paying patients. Ogni psichiatra giura di seguire un codice di condotta etico, di mettere la cura del paziente al di sopra di tutto. Ma di tutte le discipline mediche, la psichiatria ha il più alto numero di frodi e di abusi. Psychiatry is almost a license to print money. If a doctor were clever enough, and many of them are, there's no reason that they couldn't make at least a half million dollars a year fraudulently and get away with it in psychiatry. I don't purport to have deposed every psychiatrist in Las Vegas. I can tell you for a fact I haven't. Maybe I've deposed half. And by and large, they were a dishonest, deceitful, lying bunch of people. Le loro pratiche criminali e ingannevoli nel fatturare sono così prevalenti che gli investigatori delle assicurazioni hanno un gergo per queste cose: la moda della California e la stretta di mano da 100 dollari. $100 handshake is when Usually a patient is uh, institutionalized. Psychiatrist, psychologist will visit that person, shake hands with them, say, hello, I'm doctor so-and-so, I'm taking care of your, your problem here, and then leaves. They might have 10 or 20 patients there. They bill an hour for each one, and they might be in the hospital for a total of 30 minutes. So 20 patients, 20 hours, and they'd send the bills off to Medicaid. We see that most of the victims of recovered memory therapy were women who had excellent health insurance, whether it was government insurance or private insurance, because many insurance policies wouldn't pay for this kind of long-term nonsense. So those people were targeted because of the nature of the insurance that they had. Ogni anno l'industria psichiatrica statunitense froda governo e assicurazioni private di 40 miliardi di dollari, usando ogni mezzo possibile per ingannare il pubblico. There were some advertisements very subductive advertisements for people wanting to lose weight and were having problems losing weight. And they would be given, you know, all expenses paid to go to a particular spa. But when they got to this spa and went in and signed in, it wasn't a spa, it was a psychiatric center. And then they couldn't get out. What instead they received is they received massive doses of mind-altering drugs and they were kept for a lengthy period of time and their their insurance carrier was billed tremendous amounts of uh, money for something that was unnecessary. Ma le loro menzogne vanno oltre i reparti psichiatrici e finiscono nei tribunali, dove come testimoni pagati dicevano qualsiasi cosa per prendere la loro paga. A psychiatric expert who will have one opinion in one scenario and a completely opposite opinion in another scenario based on which law firm or governmental agency is paying for his time. The psychiatrist on one hand will tell the public that suicide can, can be prevented, but will go into court and tell a jury that suicide cannot be prevented. And then once you show his prior inconsistent statements, you also show that he is paid very well by pharmaceuticals, then the jury says, you know what, we're not so sure about you. Um, because you just lied to us. Aggiungete all'ingordigia, alla disonestà e all'avarizia i loro crimini sessuali. Pur essendo solo il 6% dei medici statunitensi, gli psichiatri commettono quasi un terzo dei crimini correlati al sesso fatti dai dottori. It has happened so often that by the mid 80s the insurance companies who insure physicians across America started writing sexual claims out of the policies altogether. That's how common it was. The system was so broken that more than 25,000 complaints had been registered, but nothing acted upon. When a psychiatrist 
has a patient, a female patient, and abuse them sexually, there's a very high probability they'll get away with it. I've seen many cases where the mental health professional becomes very disturbed and is using very strange and odd treatments. And that can go on for many years with no one finding out about it because it's not very public. It's quite private. Things happen behind closed doors. Tragicamente, i loro crimini sessuali a volte coinvolgono i bambini. Tipico esempio, il dottor C. Mark Amberry, apparentemente un membro rispettato di questa comunità. Questa apparenza è andata in frantumi quando è stato arrestato con l'accusa di molestie a bambini. Furgoni carichi di pornografia infantile sono stati sequestrati da casa sua. L'inchiesta seguente ha rivelato abusi sessuali su precedenti pazienti. Ragazzi da 7 a 17 anni che ha fotografato e sodomizzato. Il tutto fa parte di quello che lo Stato ha chiamato un cinquantennio di licenziosità non scoperte del dottor Berry con i bambini. Questo non è un episodio isolato. È il carattere accuratamente mascherato dei membri di questa professione. In ogni città, in ogni Stato, in ogni nazione troverai psichiatri che stuprano, commettono abusi sessuali, assassinio e frode. E come vedrai, l'intera credibilità della psichiatria dipende dalla più grande di tutte le frodi.